Welcome to the assembly of the God begotten. Raise your hands and acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in this house. Tell him, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge that you are here. Thank you for pouring your spirit out. I acknowledge your presence. I acknowledge your presence, Holy Spirit. I welcome you into my heart, into my heart, into my heart, into my being, into my person. I acknowledge your presence in this place. We acknowledge your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence in this place. In the name of Jesus, say to yourself today, say it like you understand. Today, I will encounter the magnificence of the one who has begotten me. Now say it like you understand. Today, I will encounter the magnificence of the one who has begotten me. Say it because things are going to change in your life. Say today, I will encounter the magnificence of the one who has begotten me. Hallelujah. As you may take your seats in God's presence. Good morning, family. What you just said is what the Holy Spirit asked me to come tell you to say today. Because you're going to encounter the magnificence. I quickly had to look at dictionary to see magnificence. What does that mean? And one of the words that the, 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 that jumped at me said the imposingness. I've not seen that before. So I understood it as the imposing greatness of God. The one that appears and things disappear from your body. The one that appears in your family and everything falls in, into places. The one that appears in your business and failure takes flight. The one that appears and diseases vanishes. Today, you will encounter the magnificence of the one who has begotten you. Hallelujah. So we begin a series this morning on begotten. Let's go to John chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. I expect that as, as we read and as we share an understanding a light in your heart that things not consistent with the word of God will begin to leave you because you're going to be brought into the understanding of what it means to be begotten by God. You are the God begotten. So I expect chains to fall off. I expect you to rise into your true selves in God just by sitting here and listening. John chapter 1 verse 12. Can we read it together? But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God's selves. These are the God begotten. Verse 18. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. Let's go to King James so you see is your normal scripture. Let's read it. This one you know. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Begotten is not a word. It is a reality. The reality of your sonship. The reality of your position in God. The reality of your relationship with God. The reality of your nature. And though it is a spiritual reality, its influences can be tangibly seen and felt in other aspects of life. You have no business, for instance, getting sick and abiding in sickness, living in sickness, when you understand that being begotten means you now have the resurrected life of God in you. Being God begotten, being begotten of God means that the very life that Jesus has presently is living in you. So this profound, inexplicable, life-changing experience begins with a decision. 
the scripture in that John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, if you haven't received him, if you haven't embraced Jesus as your life, this ministry today cannot help you. Because this reality is activated by a decision, yours. So you have to first receive him. You have to first embrace him. You have to first receive him for what I am going to be sharing to be activated in your life. No matter how loud your amen is, if that first condition of receiving him is not made, this, you are not the one God is talking to today. So I expect that as you listen, and, and for those that have received him, you will enter and encounter, like he said, the magnificence, the great, the glory, the weightiness, the power, the greatness of the one who has begotten you. Three things I would like to point out from that scripture. It says, you are not blood begotten. You are not begotten. Said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood. So you are not blood begotten. You are begotten of God, not of natural descent. What does that mean? You are not an assemblage of blood. So the negative things that get passed from one person to the other, the, the, the diseases, the infirmities, the afflictions of your bloodline finds no expression in you because your ancestry, your bloodline has been changed. Your bloodline is now that of Christ. Only what is found in Christ is what is permitted to be found in you. I don't know if I was too fast to get that. You are God begotten. Last night I was told by God that he's going to heal human disfigurement. I've never heard of it. I had to go look it up. Deformities, disorders and genetic abnormalities. So if you're seated here and you have issues that fall in those categories, I pray that God will awaken everyone that belongs to that, that this ministry is for to be in church, including people that have family members with human disfigurements, deformities, disorders, genetic abnormalities. I had to look that one up and discover that is the realm of sickle cell and all of those things that are associated with genetic mutation. He says, by just understanding that you are God begotten, I'm going to take disfigurements from you. I'm going to take deformities from you. I'm going to take disorders from you. I'm going to take genetic abnormalities, not just from you, from your family members. So your bloodline is now traceable to Christ. As you listen and affirm the word, I want you to hold him with his word because he said it. What's now our responsibility? You just believe it. If he said it and you believe it, it is done. I have never used the word human disfigurement. I don't, I'm not a medical person. I literally had to go and check if these things, if, if they were real words. And, this, and discover that that's an umbrella of things so you can go home and check whatever it is, take this ministry and keep it and say the words until what he said will do, he will do becomes life in your home I expect that sickle cell will be changed, I expect that people will move from SS to AA I did not say it he said he will change them I want you to believe God for your healing, for your transformation the transformation of your family member just believe it don't you don't have to do anything he has said it when you believe it it is settled and then this morning he asked me to come share with you that age related age activated disfigurement will be taken away what and i had to ask what age activated disfigurement you may be very healthy and whole now but in your bloodline your ancestral your human bloodline there is there's this thing that when you get to 50, something appears somewhere. When you get to 70, something appears somewhere. So there's something waiting somewhere to be activated, even though you are healthy and sound now. He said, as you come into the understanding that you are God begotten, that you are not blood begotten, the things of your ancestry, the things of your bloodline, age, age activated deformities, age activated disfigurement, age activated infirmities, age activated disorders, whatever is waiting in the future, hidden in a, in a particular age, for you to get to that junction, for it to be activated, is taken from you right now, even as you listen, in the name of Jesus. Why? He says, children born not of natural descent. 
you were not born of natural descent. It's not just a spiritual reality. It's a physical, it's a reality that transcends every dimension of life. You are not a product of human or natural descent. You have to come to that understanding. You have to walk in that awareness. You have to walk with that understanding that the things you carry in your bloodline, the genetic things that are still disturbing you, are there illegally. Why? You are begotten of God. And so everything that came to you genetically, came to you by blood, came to you by ancestry, I take them from you this morning in the name of Jesus. The second one says, you are not flesh begotten, you are spirit begotten. The Holy Spirit is the one that brought you forth. And because he's the one that brought you forth, he has imparted the life of God in you. You are begotten of God, not of human decisions. So you are forbidden from continuing the negative patterns of your human parents. And by human parents, it goes back to your forebears. The things they saw, the things that happened, the patterns in your family, you have been taken out. If you have received him, that's the condition. But as many as received him, and then he progressed to announce children born not of blood, not of human descent, not of fleshly desires, but born of God, begotten of God. You are God begotten. So you are forbidden from continuing the negative patterns of your human parents. I take every pattern from you that has kept you small, kept you low, kept you limited in the name of Jesus Christ. The third one says you are not man begotten. You are not a product of human decisions. Humans can only produce human life. But when you have God begotten, you've been begotten by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gives birth to a spiritual life which the Bible calls the resurrected life. That life is above things. That life cannot be limited. That life cannot be enslaved. That life cannot be sick. And to the extent you understand it, to that extent you live in the resurrected reality because it's already been given. You are God begotten. Begotten is not a word. Begotten is a reality. Whereas the natural realm gives birth to things that are natural, the spiritual realm gives birth to the supernatural life. You are fathered by God himself. When you look at your children, you see similarities, you see things. They carry your bloodline, they carry your gene, they carry things from you. So if you're fathered by God, you carry his bloodline. There are things in you, there are capacities in you that are just waiting for exploration. Every child can only grow. And if we understand in the human realm that you stand on the shoulders of your father, oh, the father was a mighty prophet. People already expect that there is something of the father that may be on the son. That's me which, with human. But with God, it's not a me. As we will see next week, you will understand as we go into this begotten, that because you are begotten of the one who is wonderful, like father said, you are wonderful. And because you are begotten of the one who is God, guess who you are? You are a God unto things, a God unto kingdoms, a God unto dominions, a God unto sickness. You are a God unto things. To the level you understand that you have been begotten and you understand in whom you've been begotten. To that level you, you leave the resurrected, the kingdom reality. You are God begotten. You were brought forth by Christ. Your ancestry isn't what you, you used to know anymore. So don't wake up and say, in this family, this is what happens. That is not your family. Don't wake up and say, my sister died of this. They are already seeing the symptoms. Take it out. You are God begotten. You've been uprooted from there and planted in the family of God. What you are supposed to see is what is in consonance, in alignment with what happens in the family of God with what is in Christ. And so when you look at the son, if you're wondering what happens with the son, go look at the whole book of John. You will see the life of the son expressly. When you look at the son, anything you don't see in Christ is not supposed to be found in you. Anything, everything you see in him is yours. The, the, the deaths you saw in him was so that you can live longer. You and I can stand and continue his legacy and manifest his dominion. You are God begotten. If that sounds like you, or even if you have not, you've never made a decision to embrace him, as we stand, bow your head before you follow to say those words because they are spirit and they are life and they are going to do what the honor of the word sends them to do. Before you say them, talk to the master and tell him, I receive you. 
because I cannot live this life as an ordinary man. You cannot cheat yourself out of this reality. Please, let's rise and affirm the word of God together. Say with me, I am God begotten. I am not blood begotten. Say, I am God begotten. Christ is my life. I victoriously overcome the world. Only that which flows from God can affect me. No divination or sorcery can work against me. Sicknesses and diseases can no longer affect me. Say, I am God begotten. It's an announcement. I have been fathered by God. Any genetic abnormalities that I carried are miraculously resolved. Diseases, infections, disorders and dysfunctions are taken from me. I have the divine, indestructible life of God in me. The evil one and all his associates cannot touch me. My life is not an experiment in trial and error. I am God begotten. I am not an orphan. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. He that is in me is triumphant. I am triumphant. He that is in me is the all-sufficient one. I am sufficient in his sufficiency. He that is in me is an overcomer. I am an overcomer. I am above the wells of the devil and the schemes of men. I am God begotten. The flesh has no hold on me. I am not subject to the elemental forces of this earth. I am above corruption and failure. I am above hopelessness and despair. I am above weakness and compromise. I am God begotten. I am a living spirit. Human disfigurement and deformities are taken from me. Age-activated deformities are taken from me. Age-activated dysfunction are taken from me. I am above pain and shame. I am above death and decay. I am above mourning and weeping. I am above evil and wickedness. I am God begotten. Joy flows freely to me. Wisdom flows limitlessly to me. Peace comes to me unhindered. Wealth streams endlessly to me. Blessings flow boundlessly to me. Open your mouth and thank God for begetting you. Say thank you Father for I am begotten of you. I am God begotten. I am garmented with the Holy Spirit. Mention the things you are above because you are God begotten. I am above sickness. I am above failure. I am above mutations. I am above limitations. I am decked with the ornaments of prosperity and well-being. I am above problems. I am above, I am above sadness. I am above sorrows. Open your mouth and begin to declare, I am begotten of God. I am not begotten of man. The things in my family cannot see me. The diseases of the bloodline cannot find expression in me. I am healthy. I am healthy.